Well, good Sunday morning. Good Sunday morning. Good Sunday morning to you. It is an honor and privilege to be before you one more time to rightly divide the word of truth and to um, allow each and every one of us the opportunity to see what God is saying and what he is speaking in the last and evil days. I'm so thankful that this is a week that's coming up that requires a little extra eating. So keep in mind uh, the message that we did on diabetes that you don't overdo it. You don't overtake the sugar, you don't overtake the greasy food that will allow your blood sugar to be up or your high blood pressure. So keep in mind of that. I have pretty much been working to uh, get myself down to a place that when it does come up, I can eat a little extra something, something to uh, bless me in my eating. What do you think? Well, I'm thankful that Thanksgiving is coming up. I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm just, I'm, I thank God for the opportunity to be here in this season. There are a lot of people that are in the hospitals and are just going through a lot. And I just pray that they continue to recover speedily. But I am so thankful that getting the opportunity to have this break in this time uh, during Thanksgiving, not just for the eating part, but to uh, to possibly just give God thanks and praise for allowing us to see to close to the end of November. Been a lot going on this year, but God has been in the midst and he's been faithful and he's been mighty good. And I'm so grateful for that. Yeah, the Bible tells us in all things to give thanks. But this is the will of God concerning us. So Amen. this is a time for thanksgiving and we and like we said, we're glad in it. Well, we're gonna go ahead and start this session and today's session will be about uh being transformed. The topic is at risk of being transformed. And that's not kind that's not really hard to understand this because of the word transform. Transform means to make a thorough or dramatic change in form, appearance, or character. Oh my God. So that's letting us know when this transformation comes, that means there's a change that has came in a dramatic way and it has changed your appearance and it has changed your character. So keep this in mind when you're going out. Yes. Okay. And you know, like the, like you were saying, transform. And then the re what is a risk is, as well. A risk is a chance that's taken. It's a it's a gamble. It's an opportunity or a liability or exposure. So we're at the at the risk of being uh, transformed, and we are excited to expound on that on today. Hey man, I am so glad about that too. And I and they and they they so much I want you to understand here because um, I know I say all the time, very often that. Sometimes we fall short of our duties as parents, uh, as guardians, uh, whatever you might want to call it. But we fall short because we don't necessarily monitor things like we need. In other words, the Bible tells us to train a child in the way they should go. When they're old, they want to depart. And that goes yeah. for every aspect. Expect, uh, I can't even tongue, so tongue tied all the time. But anyway, it's every area of that. You have to be careful and watch what's going on with a child. Now, being a parent, you won't ever win a popularity contest, number one, with your kids after they grow up. You know, because as they grow up, they in that category now that they think they grown. I know more than you, mom. I know more than you, dad. There ain't too much you can tell me because I've seen it on Facebook and I've seen it on YouTube. I've seen it on Google, how it is to be a kid. And, and, I, and that says that I don't really necessarily got to listen to you because I know more than you. Hey Amen. Sound like somebody's already transformed. But anyway, um, you, you got you got to raise them. Now, as long as they are home and not in school, they will be just as you raised them. You know, uh, that's from that. Uh, well, listen to this though, and it says, "But the day that you enroll them in pre-K, the transformation begins." <laughs> we have to keep in mind that every kid. Uh, or your child is now in contact with, you didn't raise them. So you can't expect them to be like you raised little Johnny or little Susan because uh, they're not inside your household. So you got to send your kids out knowing that uh, little Susie or little Johnny might have been raised a little bit but, uh, different than what your child is. Amen. Okay, so you have to keep in mind that, you know, what you instill in your child might not get taught to the rest of the class. Some kids are not taught to share. They're not taught to respect. 
They are not taught anything. So it will be important for you to monitor your kid daily. You see, the problem with us is we teach and tell them just for a little while and expect them to, to, to get it. And not just to get it, but to maintain, to hold on to it. But that ain't even true. You know, you got to constantly... You got to constantly continue to tell the kids every day and night what is out there and what to expect out that, that's out there in the world. And, and, and the friends might not be exactly like you because it's kind of crazy how sometimes we can fall in love or be friends with someone that the totally opposite from us. Don't even have no respect, don't have no guidelines or how they want to be. But it's, it's just strange how we just fall for that type. But see, they probably a reason for all of that because, you know, God is, is, is desiring for us to go into some of those foxholes, as I would say, and to lead someone out of Egypt. So when we come in contact with some of those type of people, you know, it is up to us to gather all the information we need from God on how to keep ourselves transformed and how to keep ourselves protected so that we can do that job that he has called us out to be. But anyway... Uh, you will see that that maybe they're not like you are. So how many of us know that if you want them to be uh, the way you want, you got to keep feeding them as long as it takes. You see, it it's sad, but it's true. All kids, your kids were encounter in school, haven't always been taught the right way to be a kid. So it makes your work and job that much harder to keep your kid in the right place in life. No matter how hard it gets, you can't stop the progress. You got to continue to teach them because as we said, now as they in pre-K and on, this is a great opportunity for them to be transformed from differently from what you taught them, differently from what God has taught you. But I do believe as the word says, as they grow old, they won't depart. They'll come back. And that's so true. I believe that. I, I truly believe that because, you know, as our sons were growing up, you know, there was many things we taught them. And then I remember some days they would come home, you know, kind of acting like they hadn't been raised or they had forgotten and they had taken on the characteristics of someone else. And immediately we picked up on it. And we're like, wait a minute, hold on. That's not what we do here, you know. And so you just have to reteach them. It's a constant training and retraining and retraining uh, situation when it comes to children and raising them. And the main thing you have to let them know I'm not giving up on you and neither will I ever give up on you but these are there are just some things that you must know and there's some things that you must do especially if you're going to maintain st staying in this household Amen. So that, that those were some of the ground rules in our house, and we taught that. And so it's still necessary today. You got to make sure you communicate with your child. You got to let them know. You know this is what we do. And when they come home, contrary to what you taught them, you got to reiterate to them this is how it's supposed to be. That's not right. This is the right way. And as we as parents, we can't be afraid to do that. We can't be afraid to make to to make sure that our stu our child is following the right path. Because a lot of parents are not teaching their children the right path. So you got to make sure you got to keep reiterating because your child could be the reason another child changes and become better. Amen. And if your child's not doing right, it might be the reason they might not be doing right. So we just got to make sure that we stay on our game and make sure that we continue to teach it to continue to mold and shape. Now, you know, now if I were you and had your kids and they were living in my household, I would make sure that everything was right because... Basically, we all don't really understand that God holds us accountable for uh, accountable for everything that they don't do correctly. And it goes back, as I was saying uh, not long ago when we was talking about Job and his kids, how they would come together and his sons would ask his daughters to come in and, and, and drink and party with them or whatever you want to call it, as they did back into the day. And Job, being Job, he decided to, um, you know, do some sacrificial things and to pray and to ask, you know, God forgive them. Cause he said they may have denounced God in their heart and they may have cursed him in their heart. So he, he tried to make preparations to make sure as long as them were his kid, that they wouldn't get in no mischief that God wouldn't take care of. Okay. But anyway, today we are probably going to get into a little bit, uh, about one of the greatest examples of, of someone, uh, being in a transformation state is Paul, Saul, or whoever, whichever you decide to call him, one in the same, uh, Saul of Tarsus, Paul of Tarsus, makes any difference, is one of the two, and you can really call him whatever you want to, but the story is, is really uh, going to be based on him. 
um, it, what would you like to say about Paul? Yeah, um, one of the things uh, about Paul was that um, before he even became, um, before he Saul became Paul, he uh, persecuted the church, mm -hmm. and he um, he was he uh, practiced Judaism, and one of the things that he um, he believed in that this way of what Jesus taught was not the right way, and he took pleasure in persecuting bringing before the, the, the church and before the governmental laws the people who were trying to follow the way of Christ. And so he had a zeal for that. And um, anybody that he found uh, doing such, he would, he, would, he would take them in. And then he was even there at the stoning of Stephen. He stood by. He watched the people stone him to death. Mm. And so he had a lot of things going on. He had a lot, a lot of... Um, a disagreement with the church. He had a lot of disagreement, I would say, with, with people who wanted to follow Christ. I won't say with the church, those who wanted to follow Christ, because it was a new way from what they were doing. Mm -hmm. So that, that was something that, that stood out with me about him. And, and once he um, decided to follow Christ, just like us, there was a great transformation that went on. What he used to do, he didn't do anymore. And so that's what we want to get to today, what he didn't do and how it influenced other people. Yeah, you, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, ironic how you were saying how he practiced Judaism. You know, on some occasion, Paul or Saul would claim to be a Roman. And on another occasion, he would claim, we were, you know, they claim to be a Jew. So, you know, why was he saying he that... He's a Roman in one breath, and then on the next breath, he was, you know, saying he was Jew. You have to really go back a little bit into that, because uh, Paul's parents was carried off as prisoners of war from the Judean town of Gishala to, uh, to Tarsus. Paul did claim Roman citizenship. You can go back and look in the book of Acts 16 and 37, or, or during uh, 22, 25, 28. It will let you know that he he basically claimed claimed hold of both the being a Roman and uh, a Jew. Okay, so so more likely when Paul was going out and you know after he was you know getting converted and all, Paul could lay claim that he was a Roman. You know, you know back in the day you had to have I guess they carried what we call today is our birth certificate. So they had to always carry uh, with them uh, proof of who they say they was and what what. What um, particular, uh, what we say, race? Well, you call it race. A region or uh, town uh, that yeah. they came from? Yeah, because it was it was all based on uh, you being important or less important hmm. based on who you was. <laughs> so Paul, as she was saying, has the reputation of persecuting the church and mm -hmm. sending Christians to prisons and, and doing all of this and that. And he was big and better enough to do it. So everybody knew of him yes, in did. the region simply because of what he did. Mm -hmm. So he didn't, he didn't gain any popularity with the Jews simply because he was persecuting the church. He was just, um, as I stated, doing everything he was big and better enough to do. So he didn't gain a lot of favor with people simply because of this. But yet and still, when it all over said and done, when Paul had to face that transformation himself, then he had to face a lot of things that wasn't in his favor. But uh, the word tells us that he, he still came out all right. Yes, he did. He certainly did. Um, so Paul, uh, Paul had the same outlook as Jesus did. In, in, in the book that I read, 21 Qualities as a Leader in the Bible, it states that we are to use our head, have a heart, and extend a hand. Mm -hmm. And that's what Paul did. I mean, prior to believing on Jesus, he was influencing others to persecute the church Christians. He took, he, took that, he took that same zeal and passion and followed the leading of the Holy Spirit to draw many to Christ. Who are you leading? And where are you leading them to? Think about that. Who are you leading and where are you leading them to? And see, you know, back then, once he when he was converted, those same people whose side that he was on, they they came against him. <laughs> That's why we have to be careful. Yeah. He 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 persecuted people. And so then he ended up 
being persecuted or being sought out to be killed because of what he believed in. And one of the things that I do admire about him, whatever it was, whatever whichever way Paul was leaning, he was zealous about it. So when he came to know Christ on the road to Damascus, when he was when light shone from heaven and he fell off his horse, his donkey, or whatever, and he immediately said, Lord, Lord, why persecutest thou me? You know. And so, you know, it's almost like, you know, the Lord had to speak to him in this manner to knock him off that so he could realize, hey, wait a minute. I've been going the wrong way the entire time. Yeah. The entire time. So then he's, we're going to just share with you some instances whereby he got caught up in yeah. and whereby it lets you know that they were at risk of being transformed. And we want to know, we want to, we want you today to remember that you are at risk with your lifestyle, the way you live, the way you walk, where you talk, where you go, who you commune with are transforming lives. And it's important that you are having those characteristics that's going to draw others to Jesus Christ. See, see, one thing you have to understand about Paul or in Saul or where he was from, like like we would say in Tarsus, is just like now, like people from California in certain regions of California uh, deem themselves to be a little more hostile than us country people. Uh, we are considered country bunkers and the Beverly Hill peoples are there. I mean, they just just consider themselves to be a whole different breed of people, and that's how it was back in the day when. They would announce who themselves was. Yes, I'm Jesus of Nazareth. I'm Paul of Tarsus. They always would, you know, relate where they were from to let somebody really see where their status. But when it come down to Paul, you know, and, you know, Paul went on and explained himself. He said, yes, I'm a Jew from Tarsus in Sicilia. Tarsus was one of the most highly regarded cities throughout the Roman Empire. That, I guess that's one of the reasons, too, after his parents <laughs> was kidnapped and, and found residing in, in uh, the Roman region, that he considered himself a Roman. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Tarsus was very old, dating all the way back to the 4000 B.C., according to some of the scholars. The city served as a primary trade route between the west and the east, and due to its large, secured inland harbor, many empires found the city to be a strategic location so evidently it might must have been some all grades of stuff that they could come in and plot out and plan and we talking about war people when i mention some of these you'll see what i'm saying uh, but anyway it was strategic located in, including listen to the hittites the assyrians the persians the uh the greeks and the egyptian in 66 bc the government of sicilia and the capital city of Tarsus passed into the hands of the Romans. Since Cecilia was one of the reason Paul, or should I say Saul, became a tent maker. See, what well, you have to understand, back in this particular region, this, this, was a, this was a great region to establish yourself as being uh, a little well off based on what you did, simply because it was a region that people came through and done a lot of trading. In other words, when it came time for Paul, when he was young, to learn a trade, he learned how to make tents. And for a good reason, because Paul, native province of Sicilia, was well known for producing and exporting, exporting a goat hair cloth sought after for making tents. The cloth was woven from the long hair of a peculiar breed of goats native of the area. So this made it uh, important to be from that region to let someone know they were from that region and as I stated it was one of the oldest regions in the Roman uh, era that that uh, stood so that lets you know these people must have been going with the flow there they must have been doing the thing that kept that city afloat so 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 Paul decided as I was stating to be a tent maker simply because of all of this and that and no doubt in my mind like I was saying earlier about being in uh, Beverly Hills or in Tarsus or whatsoever these are areas where people like to be in simply because it gives them that that certain clout that certain certain charisma to make somebody say look hey I'm from Tarsus I'm all that in a bag of potato chips so it, that's pretty much how they went out of, uh, to be about that so uh, anyway Paul did his little deal and he wanted everybody to know that he was all of this and all of that even as he went on through life, he wanted someone to see him as being someone great, no matter what he stood for. He wanted to be seen as someone great that was able to accomplish this, able to accomplish that, no matter where he was. Right.
You are so right. Because you know, in the book of Philippians, he even was bragging about that. And he said this in Philippians 3, 4 through 10. He says, though I might also have confidence in the flesh. See, he, he was doing just what you said. Yeah. He spoke it out. He said, yeah. if any man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I'm more. He Come was saying, here. I trust in my. He said, circumcised the eighth day, the stock of Israel at the tribe of Benjamin. Because he was from the tribe of ben Benjamin. That was part of his lineage. And Hebrew, and this is why he was saying he was an Hebrew of the Hebrews. It's touching the law, a Pharisee concerning zeal, Come persecuting the church, touching the righteous, which is in the law, blameless. But what things we gain to me, those I count lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless. And I count all things but lost for the excellency of the God knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but done, that I may win Christ. And then he said this, and be he want to be found in him, not having his own righteousness. See, he had changed. Yeah. Even though he had still had confidence, and he, even though he still boasted of some things, he said, but he counted all that is done. He said, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection mm -hmm. and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. And see, even though, you know, he had all these accolades, as he was saying, even though he had went to college and he had all this knowledge and everything, he counted that as done. He said, because just to know Jesus Christ is what I need more than anything else. And in his conversations... He always wanted to convince others to believe on the Lord Jesus more than anything else. Yeah, yeah, you're right. After after Christ, yeah, mm -hmm. but but before, you know, his main thing was to to seek out and destroy. Yes, Amen. it was. So, um, so you got to keep in mind too, all the things that Paul did or Saul did was seen and remembered. Even those on the bad side remember it because they just said, oh, Paul, oh, he's a bad boy. So, you know, we ain't got to worry about nothing. He's going to make sure that them Christians are going to be destroyed. And then on the other hand, you saw the Christians seeing him doing some things and they was, uh, he was intimidating them and to the point that they was, you know, worried about coming in contact with him. So I can imagine how things was after he was converted, after he was changed. And how how was he viewed? And I got uh, as, she, as she was saying earlier also how he was began to to uh, to be hated by some of those that he was uh, I would say some of their people anyway that he was trying to persecute and lock up and all this and that. So now he had a task trying to convince someone mm -hmm. that he was changed, that he was transformed into the, to the form of godliness, that he was working for the kingdom just like they were. Yes. And then on the other hand, he had to had to uh, go through the, the territories of those that, that, that knew he was a bad boy mm -hmm. and how they had to see him and take him for when he was coming out and saying this and that. But in the end of it all, I'll, as I read through what I'm about to read through, and this is actually is a testimony. This is his testimony to King Agrippa. As she was saying earlier, how how he was uh, more or less letting them know exactly what was going on. So he really uh, lauded out. And, and I'm going to read a few scriptures in the end that's going to tell you and show you exactly why his testimony was important. Amen. Because, it's like, like I said, you, you got to keep in mind, this was about a transformation. This was about a change. And just like you and me, you know, we go through some things and it may not look right to some people. Then some people might think, okay, you know, oh, man, they ain't going to never go to heaven. That's how some That's how some of you think. You might see somebody at the worst of the worst out there doing some of the worst things you ever can see. Might be an alcoholic, might be a drug addict. You might see a woman selling her uh, body for money, a prostitute and all this and that. You might say to yourself, they ain't going to never go to heaven. They ain't going to never get saved. But I got news for you today. You don't have the final say you don't have a way to change anybody or convert anybody only through your life we got to give this to God he's the only one that sees beforehand what worth someone has and when he tries to see your worth he'll place something in your pathway that will allow you to change that will help you change if you can gravitate and see it and listen and pay attention it will change you but anyway this is Paul's um, testimony to a King Agrippa, and I want y'all to get this because this is as I read through all of this, 
I mean, it was just a blessing to me. You know, you know, it, it just come a time and then later on you'll see that, you know, he had an opportunity. And I'm going to show you why he had the opportunity to testify. Because God made sure that this will happen. Just like you and me. All the things that we go through. God will make a way that you can testify this thing. Because it, it, it will change somebody. It Amen. will transform somebody. If you could go out and tell somebody just that some of the things that you came through, it will be enough to change somebody's life. Yes, but anyway, is. this is uh, uh, Acts 22. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, listen at this now. This, this is what I'm saying. When you go through all that you go through, and this is that uh, King Agrippa that knew Paul as a bad boy. And now it was kind of hard for him to buy into the plan that Paul had changed. That Paul is now standing for the ones that he was trying to persecute. See, I, I knew it was kind of hard. It had to have been hard for Agrippa to say, I don't know now. And this is a bad boy. And then on the other side of that thing, you had to have some Christians that were doubting it too. Oh, I don't know about this. Because I know at one point, the disciples, even with Jesus, was, was what didn't even want to agree to allow Paul to be part of them. But Jesus went out plain and told him, I chose him. Come on here. See, now, now I like that. Now listen at this. Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul scratched forth his hand and answered for himself. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the thing whereof I am accused of the Jews. Okay, see now, now don't you know it's good to be able to speak on your behalf? Because now, nowadays, you know, somebody can come up and make a, a false accusation against you. And you know what, majority of the time, if you got a reputation, it can stick. You know what I'm saying? No one can say, well, no, that ain't him. He ain't even like that. But see, he gave him the opportunity to speak for himself. And see, that's where you got to have that testimony when you come through some things and when you know uh, only God changed. Because I tell somebody all the time, even when I was in the world, I enjoyed some of the things I did. I enjoyed the getting high. I enjoyed the running around. I enjoyed the whole hopping. But but one thing about it, when God changed me, he took a lot of that out of me. You know what I'm saying? He took it out of me. So I can say I enjoyed it. So I knew how good it was. He said, now, now, now you're giving me the right to speak for myself. He said, now, especially before, because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions, which are among the Jews, whereof I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth was at the first among my own nation at Jerusalem, known all the Jews, which knew me from the beginning. If they would testify that after the most uh, straightest sect of our religion, I live as a Pharisee. And now I, I stand and am judged by the hope of the promise made of God unto our Father. Unto most promise, our twelve tribes instantly serving God day and night hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jew. And uh, King Agrippa probably was saying, man, brother, I can see why they accused you. I remember some of the works that you did. I remember you going out persecuting the people, dragging them back to prison, trying to make in their day a living hell. He said, I can remember some of those things. I see why they're accusing you. Come on here, somebody. He said, now, why should it be though, a thing incredible with you? That God should raise the dead. I really thought myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. See, now Paul is Paul is getting ready to just lay it all down on the line and see some of the things he did. He's going to own up to it. He's going to tell the truth. He said, "Now I sought out. Come on here to 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 be contrary to every one of them that named the name of Jesus." He said, "I was contrary." Now, that's the right that they had. Now, which thing also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests, and when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them, and I punished them off in every synagogue, and compelled them to blaspheme, and being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even into strange cities where unto as I went to Damascus with authority and com uh, commission from the chief priest at midday O king I saw in the way 
a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining around about me and then when journeyed with me and when we all fall into the earth I heard a voice speaking unto me saying in the Hebrew tongue Saul Saul why persecuted thou me is it hard for thee to kick against the prick and I said who art thou Lord let me know right there now. Hey, now he recognizes him as Lord. This cat knew what was going on here now. Because now, 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 see, the Bible tells us now you can't even call him Lord except by the Spirit. Come on here. See now, but Paul went out and said, Lord, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. But rise and stand upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of, thee, for of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in which I will appear unto thee. You see what I'm saying? See now, it don't matter how bad you are. Now, God has a need of you, he can change you. He can call that transformation to come about. And see, what I love about it, see, they, he can call your life to be a living domino. A domino effect. You know what I'm saying? Like you hit one domino and the rest of them fall over. See, he can use us all as a domino effect. See, but 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 that's the way it was. He decided to need Paul. So he changed him. Amen. Verse 17 said, Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. Oh, Lord. See, now he's sending them where he was trying to kill. Now, this was a test now. This is a test. This is a test to see if, if, he, if he was actually transformed. Had the transformation take place, took place in his life, and he forever being for real. Okay. Verse 18 said, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sin and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Were unto, O King Agrippa, I were disappointed unto the heavenly visions, but shewed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then in the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. For these cause, the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Now, what do you expect? Here you go, killing people. Now, all of a sudden, you preaching Jesus, him, him say, I mean, him delivering and, 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 and repent of your sins and, and serve God. Now, what do you think? What do you think now? Oh, my God. For these cause, the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore attained help of God, I continue until this day, witnessing both to the small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophet and Moses did say should come. That Christ should suffer, that he should be the one that should raise from the dead and should shew light into the people and to the Gentiles. And he does spoke for himself. See, I'm reading all this to let you know because this is his testimony. This is his testimony to a King Agrippa. As I stated, he was admitting to everything that he did wrong, and now he's admitting to wanting to do right. So this is his testimony. And see, what, what I like about it is, King Agrippa knew Paul. He knew exactly how he was when he was persecuting the church. So for someone as mean, as devious, and as awful as he was, it had to mean something to Agrippa because he now sent a change. He was sent a different person than he saw back before he was on that road to Damascus. So it had to take a burden on him. And as Paul went on and gave that testimony and said, I'm thankful that, that God touched Agrippa and allowed him to come out and testify in his own words. So Paul can tell the story just like it needed to be in, and not some made up version that somebody could have come alone and not not gave him the just just reward or the just attention that he needed in his testimony amen now and, and he said spoken to him fences said with a loud voice paul thou art beside thyself much learning do make thee mad but he said i am not mad see they thought he was crazy you are crazy why in the world are you trying to change why in the world are you trying to trying to serve the Lord and lead people to Christ when you were trying to crucify. Are you crazy? I can't believe you're like this. In other words, you know, they, they, they might just consider, you know, how he had it good simply because of that. You know, and all of a sudden you're going to change. So they thought he was just crazy or drunk or whatever. For the king north of these things, before whom I also speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, almost 
thou persuaded me to be a Christian. See, cause I, I, I know Agrippa had to be thinking, oh man, that gotta be a powerful source that can change someone that wake up every day trying to find somebody to persecute and to kill and to carry to prison. See, now that was his soul, soul daily routine to find someone he could torment. And I know Agrippa was saying, oh dang, you know, you know, for you to change, they got to be a uh, 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 force. And see, I like the way Paul threw it in there. Now, it was saying, now, don't, didn't you believe the prophets? Didn't the prophets speak of this thing? And, 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 Jesus, and, and Paul was saying, I, I know you know it. You got to believe what I'm saying. But anyway... And then Agrippa said, and Paul, thou have persuaded me to be a Christian. A Christian. And Paul said, I would to God. Listen at this now. After his testimony. I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and all, to, all together such as I am, except those bonds. And when he had thus spoken, the king rose up and the governor of the burners said, they that sat with them, and when they were gone aside, they talked beside themselves, saying, This man doeth nothing worthy of death or of bonds. Then King then said Agrippa to Vistus, This man have been set at liberty. He if he had not appealed unto Caesar. See now, Agrippa just listen to that testimony as he come through knowing that he is. See, that's to keep it up. There's a lot of people that know your background. There's a lot of people know all the things that you've done in your past. And see, when God called you out and you you need to be, you decided that you're ready to be saved. See, you can transform a whole lot of people by telling them your testimony. See, some of you are too afraid. You, you like to quote that scripture. Oh, it ain't fit to look back. You know, it ain't fit to go back in the past. It is sometimes. Somebody, sometimes somebody got to know and understand just what God has brought you out of and just where he has taken you so that they might see that, okay, I, if, if, if they can get saved, I have hope of being saved. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, that's the same thing I believe Agrippa was saying. And Paul was saying, I wish all of you would be saved. See, see, there comes a time when you have when you have been the worst of the worst and you need to be remembered by your testimony. Come on here, somebody. Amen. That is so true. And we all have a testimony. When we look back over our lives and we look back to what we used to be, what we used to do, how we used to do it. And then we are transformed and we are converted. Just like Paul was. He was Paul was horrible. And he and he and he and he relished in it. He was glad about it. He boasted about it. But at the same time, when Jesus came into his life, what I love more than anything is that it was that it was then that he wanted to make sure that people came to the knowledge of the truth. He wanted to make sure that people knew Jesus Christ and what he did and how he rose from the grave. And not only that, he wanted them to experience his power. He wanted them to realize that after Jesus, he sent the Holy Spirit to them. And what and one of the things that he was he said here is that um I, was my thoughts was this that um everyone who came in contact with Paul was at risk of being transformed. Yeah. Everybody. Yes. Is anybody at risk of being transformed when they come across you? Mm. And if so, how? Is it for the glory of God? Hallelujah. Your testimony could do it. Exactly. From the old man to the new to a new creature. He said in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, he said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And that's why he was. All things had become new with him. His mindset, the way he thought, the way he saw people, he could understand. Even the more, he had gained wisdom and knowledge to carry out the plan of God. He walked in his calling with great passion and zeal in spite of his enemies. In spite of those who used to hang with him or who used to be with him. Can you do the same? I guess I'm asking a lot of questions today. But in spite of what you used to do, can you still do the things of God with the people that you used to be around that did those things that you used to do that were not right? Mm. We got to be able to stand. 
We got to be able to say it. He taught the ways. He taught the way that we should live. This is what Paul did. He defended the faith of, of his belief in Christ Jesus through demonstration. He just didn't talk the talk. He walked the walk. He laid hands on the sick that recovered. People that had died, he raised them up. At one time, he was speaking, and a young man was sitting in the window. He fell asleep and fell out of this three-story building or whatever, however tall, it was, however tall it was. He prayed for him, and he came back to life. He was, he was demonstrating Christ. Are we demonstrating Christ as we should since we've been transformed? Mm. Hallelujah. Not only that, he left on record the examples of how to live a life that was that looked how what it was supposed to look like if, if you were transformed. In Romans 12, beginning at verse 9, he says, Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. Now these are some examples of a transformed life. We should be able to look on you and see these things. He also said, be kindly affectionate one to another mm. with brotherly love mm. and honor preferring one another. Mm. Not slowful in business, well. fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation. When we're going through, can you be patient? Can you believe it? Can you wait and believe that God is going to do it? Hebrew 10 and 36 says, so After you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Can you patiently wait after you've done the will so that you might receive the promise? Continuing instant in prayer. This is Paul telling us what we need to do if we're going to have a transformed life. Disputing, dis, distributing to the necessity of the saints. Given to hospitality, knowing how to care for somebody else, knowing how to wait on somebody else, how not to always want to be number one. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. He's talking about a transformed life. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mm. Mind high things, but condescend to men of lower seat. Low, low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. Mm. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Don't do evil for evil. Well, Provide things honest in the sight of all men. I'm almost finished here. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Go back up to verse 18. If it be possible, as much as lies within you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, he said, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if, if my enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. And in so, for in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. He knew what he was talking about. He knew what it would take to have a transformed life that would cause others to want to be transformed. But what are we doing today? Are we doing that? Are we walking in these characteristics and attributes that Paul is talking about here? Can others be drawn or transformed by your life? By the way you live, by the way you give, by the way you respond, by the way you forgive, by the way you love. It's necessary. Yeah, it is. When Paul speaks of himself, here he stated that he was nothing without the Lord. So what do you think you are? Mm. What do you think you are if you don't have him? It's time to monitor yourself. Look at your life and compare it to the Lord's. Look at your life and compare it to the attributes and the characteristics that Paul was talking about here. How will we change the world if we don't even look like change? It's necessary. In Philippians 3, verse 4 through 10, Paul wrote to them and he said this, Though I might also have confidence in the flesh. And as I was talking about earlier, and I'm not going to go all through this, he was talking about what he had confidence in. Um, possibly his education, his family lineage. You know, he was, a, he was from the tribe of Benjamin. You know, all these things. He came from a great city. But he said he counted as done. He preferred to be just named as a child of God. Someone who chose to do the whole will of God. In 2 Timothy 
2.24-26, Paul said this, And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, and be patient. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God preventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Paul wanted others to be what they were destined to be. Transformed for mm. the kingdom. Transforming their thinking. Transforming their heart. Transforming the way that they live their life. Yeah. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you today. To live a life whereby others can look on it and want to be transformed. Many came to know Jesus Christ because of Paul. Are many knowing Jesus Christ because of you? What are you showing? What do the world see when they look on you? Do they see in the attributes of the Father? It's necessary. You know, it's just like um, a lot of us today. We are going through some of the similar things. We, as, as I have said so many times through this message, that we do what we're big and bad enough to do. It takes people like us, because I've been there and done that. I've been the worst of the worst. And I know... That because of all of that, God called me out to do a specific work. There is no testimony if you haven't been through anything. Mm. Where did where did the testimony come in doing nothing? Where did the testimony come you been through nothing? So you can't be ashamed of the things that you've done in your past. A lot of you, you know, like to consider yourself still being in the past. Uh, and now you say, but you still want to look at your life as being in the past. You're not in the past anymore. You are transformed. You are mm -hmm. uh, saved. You are delivered. So preacher. you don't have to look back to how you was. But the deal of it is, it's good to testify about about where God brought you from. Because that's what Paul had to do before Agrippa. He had to testify, give his testimony for all that he came through and all that, you know, he did. So that someone would see the light of his change. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's people like like us that's the worst of the worst that gives someone an opportunity to see that, yes, Jesus saved. Yeah, it goes far to say in the book of Isaiah 59 and 1, if I'm not mistaken, he said his arms are not shortened that it still can't save. So some of them same people that you have counted out because they're doing some of the things that you think they shouldn't do and can't be forgiven for, some of them same people are going to be great in the sight of Christ. Simply because they're going to do a, a work. See, it, it makes them know, okay, if I came from that, I know it took a God to drag me out of all of that I was in. All the crazy mess I was doing. It took a God. And I think that's what convinced Agrippa. You know, he said, Lord, it had to have been a God mm -hmm. to change Paul like he did. Mm -hmm. And see, the thing of it is, see, we all be warned, even down to Paul, we be warned of what we're going to face when we decide we want to, you know, switch teams. And start working for the kingdom and come out of, of Satan's kingdom. We are warned. Or what we're going to face and what we're going to come through. You're going to have people that, that's going to uh, uh, doubt you. You're going to, have, uh, you're going to be uh, considered a uh, false preacher or false prophet. Or, Holy uh, uh, Yeah, or uh, someone that, that's claiming salvation but you ain't saved. See, you're standing on the sideline judging when you should be trying to get yourself right. The Bible said work your own soul salvation out with trembling and fear. Amen. Come on here. So stop judging somebody that's at the bottom of the burrow and God, you know, raising them up. The Bible said if we be humble, he will raise us. Come on here. So so that lets us know. And then if you are raised, then he say he will bring you to nothing. Come on here. But anyway, he warns us exactly what we're going to be facing when we change that life when we, when we go through. And I can just see Paul now sitting away. Yes, I, I, I knew now that it's you, Jesus. I knew that it's you that's talking to me. So I don't care what I got to face. This is worth it. See, because Paul encountered something that he had never encountered before. Someone speaking and, and, and then and, 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 and he knew it was heavenly. Because when he tried to explain it to Agrippa, he was saying how heavenly it was. So he knew this was Jesus. So he was even about to stay in that life that he was in. He was ready to change and and, and to be uh, what someone needed in order to, to be led to the light. And that was his goal. But anyway, we, he was all warm. Luke 21 says, but before all these, they shall lay their hand on you and persecute you, deliver you up to the synagogues and into the prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. 
Okay, and Jesus is saying here, there will come a time when you will be seen as a troublemaker because you are for me. Are y'all hearing me? Mm. So you can't worry about what folks say. No, in the end, who got you? Now listen at this now. Mm -hmm. He said, and you are lifting up, uh, li lifting him up above the kings. Mm -hmm. You are lifting him up above the president. You are lifting him above the Pope. You are lifting him up above the pastors and the bishops. He said, when you do that, they're going to see you as a troublemaker. Come on here, somebody. He said, in verse 13 says, and it shall turn to you mm, for testimony. You see what I'm saying? All of that you're going through will be brought back to you that you hire for a testimony. What is the testimony? How he brought you out. Mm-hmm. How he changed you. How he transformed you. How he made you new. That will be your testimony. And see, someone's going to hear that and get saved. Verse 14 says, Sell it therefore in your hearts. Listen at this now. Not to meditate before what you shall answer is not for you to answer. He said, in other words, no need for you to think on what you need to say. He's saying, I got you. No matter what you're going to face, no matter what you're going to go through, he said, I got you. Don't worry about what you got to say. I'm going to give you what you need to say. And I got you. Yes. Oh, my God. And see, when he says that, that means a lot. Amen. That means a lot. Now, verse 16 says, and ye shall be portrayed both, listen at this, by parents and brethren and kin folks and friends. And some of you shall... Some of you shall they cause to be put to death. Verse 17 says, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Come on here, somebody. But there shall not, listen at this now. This is why you can continue to fight, continue to work. Listen at this now. He said, But there shall not, uh, uh, her on your head, perish. He said, Because I got you. Verse 19 said, In your patience possesses ye. Your soul. Amen. Oh, my God. Amen. See, your soul is in the hands of your patience, willing to do everything that he's asking you to do. Mm -hmm. Stand for everything that he's asking you to stand. Now, some of you might, might realize that I skipped verse 15, so now I'm getting ready to read that verse 15. Because this verse 15 has a little bit more meaning to it than the rest I just read you. Verse 15 said, now listen to this. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. Now, check this out. Gainsay means contradict. Mm -hmm. Or speak out against. Yes. So he's saying, now I'm going to make it where they can't speak out against you. <laughs> Come over here, somebody. Or they won't contradict what you say. Mm -hmm. Now he's saying, you saying now, yeah, I'm in God. I'm saved. I'm ready to, I'm ready to bless God in every way I know how. So he said they won't contradict you, not even based on what they seen you do in the past. The worst of the worst. Now, like he said, you will get an opportunity, just like Saul, to speak on your own behalf. See, this is the testimony he said that this will bring into you. You will be able to speak on your behalf those things that he brought you out of, those things that he took you through. Remember, he said, I got you. So you can't be afraid to speak those things which you got to speak because, like he said, these things can cause that transformation that needed to be so. Last scripture, then we're then we done. Philippians 1 and 12 says, now listen, get this. Now, this is the key. This is the key of going through. This is the key to knowing that he's got you. This is the key to the, just doing everything that you know you can do and knowing that he's with you. But this is the key. Listen at this. Paul said to the Philippians, now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that was that, that happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. <laughs> Good God of mine. He said all of that that happened was that the gospel could be advanced. Oh my God. Coming through was the opportunity for the gospel to advance. Going through, being persecuted, was so that the gospel could be advanced. You see what I'm saying? Now it's worth you going through. So that someone else may come out. 
Come on here, somebody. Somebody will be uh, or will have a risk of being transformed simply because of what you came through and what God brought you Amen. out of. Amen. And he brought that testimony to you so that you can tell that somebody can come out. Mm-hmm. Stop! Stop trying to save or, or forget all the things, all the things that you've been through in your life. These are things that someone can see that God is powerful. If He can bring you out of a situation that looked hopeless, then you know there's some hope for me. Come on here, somebody! You got to know this. So stop trying to hold on to that. It's time to testify, y'all. It's time to testify mm -hmm. of the things that God brought you through and brought you out of. That someone else might see and be transformed. Amen. This has been another Wiser Future podcast. We hope and pray that something has been said or done that would allow you to get on your bandwagon and testify that the gospel can be advanced on God's behalf. This is another Wiser Future podcast. And we out. Have a blessed Sunday.